everybody, it's Heidi from Costume Co. And I'm back with another video uh, doing a wonderful interview today with a costume designer of Shiva Baby. And I'm really excited to have her here. She's here from Arizona uh, today, but then she's going to be traveling. Uh, hi, Michelle. How are you today? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Heidi, um, for having me here today. Uh, I'm really, really excited to talk to you all about Shiva Baby. Absolutely. Um, well, before we get started on the movie and talking about that, do you want to tell us a little, like I saw that, you know, where you went to school and everything and how you kind of got uh, into the business. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and yeah. how you got into costume design? Because I have a lot of aspiring costume designers who love watching the show and finding out about that. Absolutely. It was sort of a happy accident. I always knew that I wanted to work within the arts and um, I always thought it was going to manifest itself through studio painting or graphic design when I was in high school. But um, being involved in backstage theater when I was in high school really exposed me to the collaborative element of what we do in this industry. And I fell in love. I went to Carnegie Mellon uh, for my BFA in costume design and the rest is history. Yeah. And then so did you sort of like, sort of how did you sort of after you went to school, were you working in some independent films during school or like, how did you sort of put your toes into the business itself? Yeah, it, it was, you know, as, as so much in this industry, it's, it's someone knowing someone knowing someone else who recommended you for one thing. Um, and then that person not being available. And then, you know, the the game of telephone goes on. So I did a lot of theater when I was in high school, I mean, high school and college. And so my background when I was at Carnegie Mellon was really heavily based in theater. And in our, in our final year, we had like one class in film and television. And so I wasn't really exposed to any sort of costuming for film and TV and the differences between television and theater until my last year in school. But after I graduated, the producer of Shiva Baby had contacted me through a recommendation of another friend of mine asking if I was available to costume design a short that she was directing. Katie Schiller, as some of you may know, is a producer on Shiva Baby and she was the director on a short film called A Portrait of Francis in Clothes. And you know, she enjoyed working with me so much that she thought Emma and I could really hit it off in the process of Shiva Baby. And we totally did. I remember sitting in my bed responding to the email that um, Katie had sent asking if I was available. And I was so excited I nearly fell off my bed. Wow, so you were actually involved in the original short. Uh, do you wanna explain a little bit about that? How So how we went from the short into a feature length film and how you got involved in that? So I um, I actually wasn't involved in the short. Oh, okay, I sorry. was, yeah, so I, I had worked with her on a separate short and she had like, that was maybe like a month or two before the feature for Shiva Baby was being produced. And so she had reached out to me maybe like a month after a separate shirt I had worked with her on. Oh, okay. So that's how you originally got involved in Shiva mm -hmm. Baby? Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, before we get into the costumes of the movie, um, I know, okay, I know you said that you weren't actually involved in the poster, but I just want to show everybody how fun is this poster? Sorry, let me just pull it up for everyone to see. Um, so was this, do you know, if was this done like after the actual movie was produced? Yes, if all of my sources are correct, that incredible poster, it was arranged by our distributor. And I so exactly. it was um, created after our movie. I think that probably went into production a couple months ago. Um, so yeah, it is It is just so, so fun. Yeah, because it's totally different than the, the original short film was, right? And mm -hmm. um, and of course she's like slathered, like I don't even know if it's real cream cheese or not. Like did they put a, if they put a frame and a little hat, but anyways, it's awesome. And I was just saying to Michelle, before we started the interview, of course I love lox and cream cheese. So that's like a dream come true for me and capers and a little bit of onion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I like to dress my bagel. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I read in an interview that the writer and director, who is Emma Seligman, I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly, mm -hmm. was helpful with the research about Shivas. And can you tell me a bit about that? Emma is the kind of director that drew, that designers dream about working with. You know, she's sharp, she's witty, she's thoughtful, and most of all, she really knows what she wants. Emma genuinely cares about what you as a costume designer have to bring to the table. And she knew that, you know, there was an existing short film, but in our collaboration, she really, really was like, you know, don't let 
what that short film looked like limit what you believe the feature film could look like. And she was so generous with her time and input. And, you know, she always had so many things going on because as a first time director and um, as someone who was so ambitious with everything that she was trying to accomplish, there was just so many things that she had to be thinking about at all times. So for her to give me her time as a director and as a costume designer, it was just really, really special. Um, part of, parts of the process that we poured over, um, we, in our first meeting that we set up together, we went to lunch and she and I poured over each character for like hours at a time. And we looked at family photos of hers from, I think, pictures of like the 90s from, from like family gatherings. And it was just so nice. And she even had um, the time to set up a phone call between me and her mom to talk about the do's and don'ts of Shiva etiquette. Oh, I'd love to know that. So what's a don't? Yes. So a don't in Shiva etiquette is kind of like you want to dress up nicely. You know, you you don't want to show up in something that isn't representative of you in like a nice way. You know what I mean? Like you you don't want to wear something that is too fancy, but you can wear something that is a little bit fancy because it's okay. it's that sort of respect that you want to show to the family. Yeah. Um what about like hosiery? Is that something you're expected to wear if you have um a shorter skirt? Like I noticed with the girls, we can get into mm -hmm. that in a bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. So, so Oh, okay. Um, for the Shiva that um, we were focusing on, we focused on reformed Jewish Shivas. And so the etiquette around dress is a little bit more relaxed. You know, the, we can see that, that a lot of the costumes in the film, the hemlines of the dresses and the skirts really vary widely. And so some people were wearing hosiery, some people weren't wearing hosiery, and that was okay. Oh, okay. Um, I was just going to say, because I've been to actually a bat mitzvah that was reformed. So that was my, I've never been to a shiva, but that mm -hmm. was my only experience. And I, to be honest with you, the one thing I remember was when we went to the bat mitzvah is that everything was really colorful. Like, uh, you know, you always, ex you know, normally everything mm -hmm. would be very dark, but they had these very, very beautifully colorful prayer shawls, which I was like, wow, I've never seen anything like that. So a completely different thing compared to say orthodox what my yeah. people might think, I suppose. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a lot of research that you had to do um, in order to, you know, determine what people would actually wear to a Shiva and yourself. I'm assuming you've never been to one, right? So you no, I've not been to a Shiva, but I have been to my fair share of, of mitzvahs in, in my age. <laughs> So, you know, so what we, when we traditionally think of funerals, we think of black. And so it looks to me that you, you know, you decided to go with black, but you know, there's so many different types of shades of black that you could use. So how did you approach that with the, the design? It was definitely a delicate balance, you know, because there are, you, you never want a black that's too black to be in front of a camera because when you put that shade in front of the lens, oftentimes it can just become a black hole. And so that is like the danger of using the color black. You know, there are warm blacks, there are cool blacks, and depending on what type of fabric that black is, it absorbs or reflects light. And, you know, so I decided to go more in line with fiber choice, texture and pattern where I could. One of my favorite pieces um, was Deborah Offner. She played Ellie. She has this black Devoray checkered shawl. In the film itself, she's the woman with blonde hair who like shark grabs Daniel's tiny waist. Um, that's the character I'm talking about. But oh my has... gosh. That's, by the way, is that not every girl's nightmare to have that happen to them? <laughs> to have someone come right, up in to front you of, and like... grab you by the waist? Like, don't touch me there. <laughs> oh, there were so many cringe moments in that movie, by the way, that had nothing to do with costume. Oh, but like the tension is there, you know, and like, thinking about how to have that contrast was something that I had to think about as a costume designer. And like, speaking of contrast, um, that Devoray checkered shawl, you know, it's so simple by itself, but once you layer it onto what Ellie was wearing, it added so much luxury and comedy to her outfit. You know, it almost looked like she was about to go to a cocktail party. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now, but the one thing I did notice, and I noticed this right away, is that Joel wasn't wearing black. So what was the decision behind that? And also, you know, he's wearing quite a, you know, colorful shirt and tie and just completely stands out. He's his own person, right? 
So I think a lot of Shiva Baby was um, a myriad of happy accidents. We actually curated that entire look from um, Fred Melamed, who plays Joel, uh, his, his closet. So every single piece that made it onto screen, he owns as a real human outside of the realm of this film. Um, and we came to that because in my first correspondence with him, I had sent him my initial costume design renderings. And I... Um, was telling him, oh yeah, you know, like I envision him in this black, like this, this black suit and like a tie, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, huh, Michelle, what if Joel wasn't in black? What if he was in an outfit that totally didn't fit the occasion of a Shiva? And that wardrobe discussion that Fred and I had was to support Joel's father who wants to give Danielle secondhand embarrassment. And it kind of also gives Joel this air of confidence. You know, he knows he's not the fashionista of this family, but he's gonna do what he wants to do. And Debbie, his wife, loves him for that. And I think that was a smart choice ultimately because it does play up the comedy aspect of the clothing that these characters wear is like obviously we are at a shiva and you know the the uh, sensible thing would you be to wear black but he's not dressed in black and that kind of supports his character a little bit and that yeah, bright, he shows really up with a minivan <laughs> totally yeah, embarrassing right, right. like he's like embarrassing dad oh embarrassing dad you know can you wear black don't you own a black suit dad just so you don't know you have to do that don't you that'd be yeah. like my dad would do honestly Definitely. And that bright blue dress shirt, um, it, yeah, I mean, this was another happy accident, you know? Yeah. This is the perfect picture to kind of uh, write what I was talking about because that bright blue shirt that Joel is wearing, it plays so nicely against Max's blue dress shirt. At first, when I figured out like after the fittings and whatnot, I was in such a panic because I was thinking, oh my God, they're in the exact same color. But then I was like, oh my gosh, they're the exact same color, you know, for the two daddies in the movie. Chef's kiss, you know, it it worked out so nicely. Yeah, I actually didn't even notice that Max was wearing a blue shirt and like during the whole movie, to me, yeah. it just kind of blended. And then it wasn't until I went back to look at the stills. So it totally worked. It was just sort of like, uh, like you say, a happy accident. Um, so there's a quote. I... <laughs> I thought this quote was really funny. So W. C. Fields said that never work with children or animals. So I wanted to know, given the story, would would you agree or disagree with that statement? So I have worked um, on a couple sets where we both have children under the age of one, and I've worked with animals before. And I would say overall, I have no hard feelings on a yes or no to working with either. But all I would say is if you do decide to have children or animals in your production, just be very prepared and open to any and all possibilities and have doubles. <laughs> yeah, no. So for instance, uh, like, you know, whenever you hear about a movie being done, it's usually with twins, right? But you didn't have yeah. a twin. You just had the one uh, little rose baby. So uh, you uh, you had multiple clothes, outfits, I'm assuming for her, just in case there was a spit up or, you know, there was leaky diaper, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But uh, I have to ask you just because I need to know about the movie magic. Did you have to add in some of the crying or was the crying just natural? <laughs> um, the crying was all natural. <laughs> wow. That must have been a very stressful set to be on. Yeah. Yeah. I remember our AD. He was, you know, just having the time of his life that day because um, we were running behind schedule, of course, because, um, you know, babies cry and that's okay. But sometimes that changes the trajectory of the script and story. <laughs> I have to say though, like being a mom, it actually added a lot to the tension of the the movie. Uh, it was funny because I was reading something about how the score and, and how that was shot there, if it had that horror movie feeling. And I absolutely agree. Um, like it was almost like an A24 movie at some times, just like the feeling of dread and the <laughs> closing in, you know, and the baby crying. It's so it really actually added to it for me. Um, but I wanted to, so the next question I want to ask you is about the bracelets. So, you know, we oh, actually I have a picture here. So at the very yeah. beginning, we see, um, our lead girl, Danielle, getting up, receiving a bracelet, bracelet. You, actually, this is the only other scene you did, I guess, besides the Shiva, you had this preamble scene or, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so you want to tell me a little bit about this scene and, and about the bracelet? Yes. So there is a well-kept secret among us costume folk from New York City. And that secret is a storefront on Broadway called Earrings Plaza. 
It's a wonderful vendor that carries an incredible variety of jewelry in all different shapes and sizes at these amazing wholesale prices. And, you know, it's well known now that Shiva Baby was made on a budget and that applied to the costume department too. So I, you know, I thought Earrings Plaza was a no brainer. That was going to be the place that I was going to go to buy many different multiples of many different styles um, at once. So I bought a total of 15 bracelets in three different styles and I hauled all of them to set because I think on the day where I was shopping, we were um, actually filming that day. So um, I know you have other questions like later down the line about how many people are in my department. So I will reserve, but um, sure. I, I ultimately, you know, had to leave set to go shopping to get these bracelets in order, you know, so like there was just so much running back and forth. But once I got to set, Emma and I ultimately settled on the one that made it to screen. But they were so cheap that they kept breaking. And I think they don't look cheap, though. They look, they look very, they look really, really expensive, as you mentioned, yeah. as it's mentioned in the story. Uh, I love that you shared one of your story, uh, stores that you like to shop at. I'll ask you. We're going to get to that in a minute as well. Um, but speaking of multiples, I actually have a picture of this. So mm -hmm. we have um, Danielle. Uh, she has, you know, a, a several, she has an accident during, the, which of course, again, adds, builds to the tension. You know, she's got, you know, her mom's tending to her. Um, so do you want to tell me a little bit about her outfit and how you came to, I think I might've missed another question, but how you came to do the, uh, that blouse for her? Sure. Sure. Yes. So you're talking about that coffee stain. Yes. So in our shooting schedule, um, we had to film certain scenes where Danielle had already spilled coffee on her shirt before we were actually able to do that practical gag um, in like during the course of filming. And so I remember there was a moment where I sat down in the wardrobe room and I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. So I have to figure out the physics of the coffee pouring on her shirt because I have to make sure it looks like what it will possibly look like without knowing what it's going to look like once she actually does the gag on screen. So I remember me and Rachel, we um, got naked, went to a bathtub in the house and I started pouring coffee on her while she was wearing one of the doubles of the shirt. Wow. So that is how we created that look. Yeah. And here, yeah, here it is again yeah, for you to it. see. But I was reading something about you. There's a place that you got it and you were having a problem. You needed multiples and you had a, you were having a little bit of a problem. But, the, you know, you said the wardrobe gods were looking down yes. upon you. So how did that all come about? So I had only purchased two multiples in addition to the one shirt that she was wearing. And I quickly realized that uh, I didn't buy enough. But the one big glaring problem that was in my way was that I bought those shirts from the clearance rack from a Forever 21 that was going on business. <laughs> so uh, I counted my lucky stars and I saved that clothing tag because I went on a mission around the city going to like all the Forever 21s I could in the area in a desperate attempt to find the shirt again. And I was able to get my hands on two more multiples of that shirt after combing through the endless piles of disarray and working with the sales reps who were so helpful um, saying, you know, just telling them, I swear they're here. Your systems say they exist. I know you don't know where they are, but we're going to find them together because I need them today. That's awesome. This is, by the way, this is a picture of you shopping. Yes. Now, are those Ikea bags? What kind of bags are those? <laughs> those are the trusty $1 Ikea bags. That they're the best, aren't they? They're wonderful. Uh, do you know what store you're in here? Yes, I know exactly. Which I was in a Zara and I was shopping for the glasses that Debbie, played by Polly Draper, ends up wearing. So that's exactly what was happening. I love her glasses, by the way. I just absolutely love them. I Actually, I was going to ask you about them. They're her, I thought they might have been her personal glasses, but so they were non-prescription? Yeah, so they were non-prescription. So I got them from Zara. They were like $30. But, you know, because they were from Zara, they had like the cheapy plastic lenses in them. Mm -hmm. So me and the producers, we had this whole kerfuffle about um, finding a vendor that had like, you know, a one day turnaround to get them switched out for glass lenses to reduce the camera glare. Because that's always the thing that we have to balance when we're filming is making sure that we don't catch any of the lighting equipment in the glasses. <laughs> 
Uh, no, exactly. And I have that problem with my glass, which my mm -hmm. glasses, by the way, are a little wonky because I sat on them earlier. <laughs> oh, no. This is always the this is always the issue with people who wear glasses is the glare, right? And mm. in film, of course, that's always an issue. Um, I skipped over this earlier, but I wanted to ask you, like regarding like the costumes, because you had to, you know, work with black mostly, like were there ways that you went about conveying character uh, in your, you know, despite the fact that you had to sort of be within this parameter of color? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because I knew that, you know, black was going to be the predominant color, the extras were going to be wearing black, most of the principals were dressed in black, I really wanted to use accessory as a way to bring more interest to the character. And so, um, yeah, with, with Debbie here, you know, like those glasses, I think, have become such an iconic part of her character. And that, you know, they are also these darker glasses. And that style was inspired by Emma Seligman's actual mom too, because her mom um, owns glasses in that style. And so that was kind of a direction that Emma gave me. And she's like, hey, you know, like if you've come across anything in this style, it would be great. Yeah, are they black or what color are they? They are this tortoise shell, like horn rimmed, but yeah. Um, and then a nice dark. little bit of gold there. I love mm -hmm. it. And then, and then Joel's wearing sort of like, he's got a bit of a, a more of a, oh, there she is again. She, he's got more of a rounded style, which I love his yeah. glasses too, though. Are they his? Those are his, yeah. Which makes it easy because then if they're prescription he has, you don't need to worry about that. Right, right. Absolutely. Now, what about Danielle? Do you want to, do you want to speak to her a little bit? Absolutely. So, so so Danielle's fitting, we, I think I bought four or five different white dress shirts for her, you know, and they ranged in fabric and translucency of the fabric and drape. And Emma and I, when, when we were in our fitting together with Rachel, something we spoke a lot about was finding that right shirt that kind of made Danielle feel not as prepared as one might be for Shiva, you know? And so um, we really wanted the drape of that shirt to kind of be loose, kind of like wrinkle really easily. And so I think the shirt that she's wearing is like a linen blend, which was perfect because, you know, number one, we were shooting in the middle of dead hot summer and it was really wrinkly. And, you know, up against everybody else who maybe seems a little bit more put together. For example, Molly Gordon playing Maya here. She's mm -hmm. in a sleeker outfit. Her blazer is a little bit sleeker as well. And that created that sort of contrast that we were looking for when we put the two of them next to each other. I also found Maya to be a bit sexier. Was that intentional? Like there's, you know, there's a little bit of cleavage, whereas mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Danielle is a little bit more conservative. Was that, in, uh, so tell me a little bit about Maya and what you were thinking there. Yeah, so a little bit of intentional, a little bit of happy accident, like I was mentioning before. That dress um, is Molly Gordon's, and um, she 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 told me that she's worn it in like a plethora of other films in the past before. But I mean, it just looks so good on her. You know, um, like you were saying, it really added that subtly sexy element to her look, and that was something that was intentional because she is Danielle's ex-girlfriend and she knows that Danielle's gonna be there. And so um, even though in their first interactions with each other, they're a little bit standoffish, there is that undeniable sexual tension between the two of them that kind of rides throughout the entire movie. And so we really wanted to make sure that that element made it into her costume. Yeah, and I don't have a picture of it, but her shoes were really cute as well. I really liked her shoes. That scene, whether she's standing outside smoking a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> those are hers too. Yeah. So uh, really on point for those. Um, so um, I was saying, I actually have a picture of you as I, you know, just show that you did a lot of the heavy lifting yourself, it looks like. So do, actually, I've got these really fun wardrobe pictures here of your closet. So do you want to tell everyone a little bit about this? Sure. I wish I took more photos of the wardrobe room um, because this wardrobe room, I want to say the dimensions were at most like 15 by 15 feet. It was oh, such wow. a small room. Yeah. But in that room, it was all of wardrobe, all of makeup. The production office was also in there. So like it was three mm -hmm. departments crammed into this tiny room together. And so my half of the room were like three racks of just costumes. And a lot of the costumes I did shop, but a lot of it also came from my closet and Emma's closet. And so 
you know, when you're on an indie production, you do have to get crafty and you do like, you do have to um, go to your own wardrobe sometimes, which is really fun too, because I look at many of these pieces and I'm like, oh, this could work for this character. I'm just going to pull this. And so my closet was empty for about a month because the entirety of it was on set. Yeah, Michelle, I think that's sort of uh, a wardrobe or, you know, especially in theater, beg, borrow, steal. Yeah. Did you, do you use that term, right? <laughs> so yes, you do what you can. Do. <laughs> I've actually, I've gotten into trouble. Like I've had boyfriends where they'll go to see a show I did and they're like, hey, wait a minute, those are my glasses. Oh, sorry about that. But I'm like, you know, you know you're with a wardrobe person. You have to, you know, expect that uh, something you own is going to end up in a production, right? <laughs> or yeah, you go to your parents' I mean, house and totally. you're like, oh, I was looking for that. <laughs> I yeah, need a top hat. Can I have that? Right. A lot of explaining. I promise it'll make it back to you. I will yeah. return it, you know. Um, but I think that that's the spirit of indie filmmaking and theater for that matter, you know, is like, yeah, it's it's a collaboration that everyone comes together to really um, make art. Yeah, for sure. Um, so um, we were we were talking about touching on this a little bit earlier. So I know you were doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but you did have some people on your team. So who worked with you on this? And and also maybe as a, an additional thing, it, did you guys also have to do the hair, or did, was that a, a different person? So we had a incredible uh, hair and makeup. Um, person called Lily Lee and so she was responsible for you know all of that continuity and she did a fantastic job but I worked really closely with her and you know because our stations were right next to each other um, in the same room we got to become really good friends. <laughs> Yeah, because I wanted to know about Danielle at the beginning has her hair sort of long and, and straightened. And I said to my husband, we were watching it. I'm like, I think they've ironed her hair because she's got that sort of kink in her hair. And then when, you know, moved to the uh, the Shiva and then her hair is like curly and she's tried to, you know, tame it in some way. But as the show goes along, it just gets a little bit more <laughs> out of control, right? Yeah. I mean, to speak on that note, you know, um, I mean, because I remember Emma, me and Lily, we were talking about this um, idea the entire time when we were you know, having our first meeting and the straightening of the hair and then becoming really frizzy was an intentional aspect that Emma wanted to bring into that character because Emma was saying, you know, um, when she was growing up, um, and it applied to her too. She always wanted to strain her thick curly hair, but it would never stay straight because it's like a million degrees out in the summertime. And so like, no matter what you do, it's always going to curl back up. Yeah. And you had that sort of steamy weather kind of, uh, when you're on these shoot days. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so oh, do you want to tell me a little bit of the other team that you had? Sorry, we skipped over that. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Um, yes, the heavy lifting statement is both true um, physically and metaphorically. The prep process for Shiva Baby was really condensed. I only had about two weeks to get everything sorted out um, after my initial call. And I was by myself for all of pre-production. I had to be my own coordinator, my own shopper, my own PA. And there's this great mall um, on Long Island called the Roosevelt Field Mall. And I was just hauling ass, hitting every single store I could. And I, you know, like I said, tore through my own closets to find everything that I could find that might work for Shiva Baby. Actually, Danielle's black blazer that she wears as part of her costume is actually my blazer that oh, I okay. bought when I was in high school from Charlotte Roos. So, oh wow, that's amazing! Yeah, yeah. And she happened to be that size. That's that's like you know, um, uh, serendipitous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it's it's a lot of ragtag um, putting things together when you were on an independent shoot like this by yourself. But during shooting, luckily, I was able to bring on. Um, part-time key costumer and a costume PA, I think for about half of the shoot days that we had. So it was oh, okay. really, really helpful. Yeah. Super yeah. Helpful. But still a lot of, uh, of work for you. Uh, there were a couple of like, I didn't, I don't have them, but there's some really, I'll put a link in the description. There's an mm -hmm. Instagram account for Shiva baby. And there's some really fun pictures like of the cast and crew and including you. So I'll put a link in the description for that. If anybody wants to go over there and check it out. And also your uh, Instagram as well. You're on Instagram. Yes. 
So just a few more questions. Now you touched on a couple of places that you like to go the mall and then the place you went for jewelry. But besides that, you know, you, you're, you, you're from New York. Are there any places that you love to shop? Doesn't have to be New York. It can be anywhere um, that are your little go-to places, your favorite places that people Definitely. might want to know. It really, I mean, I, I feel like I approach each text and each script as an individual, you know? So it really depends on the needs of the show. If it's a modern piece that can be shopped in stores, then I always like going to a mall, especially if I'm the only person working at the time, because so much time in New York City especially is spent lost, like time is lost spent in transportation, going from store to store, or just like being stuck in a subway, for example, for like 45 minutes if you get trapped underground. So going to the mall, um, I think is the best way to be time efficient, especially when you're just working by yourself. But as far as like specific stores that I love going to, I mean, Earrings Plaza has to be up there with accessories just because their selection is just amazing. And the qual like the prices, you, you can't beat them. But I love going towards Etsy and Instagram lately. You know, there's a lot of vintage shopping and a lot of really great, um, individually owned stores on Instagram and I love supporting small businesses and it's 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 been great you know um a wonderful resource for finding unique vintage pieces that maybe won't exist near you especially if you're working out of town you know and and the selection at the stores in the small town you're working in just doesn't have it yeah, I've been I've a lot of people have mentioned Etsy to me and I love Etsy too, just even for myself, you know, mm -hmm. just to um, uh, for my, you know, like you say, you can support someone local if you want, you can even sometimes go pick it up if they're nearby you. So what about eBay or or just on, like Amazon? Dare I say that? Amazon so <laughs> in a pinch, <laughs> in a pinch, Amazon is a lifesaver um, for Shiva baby. I did purchase a couple of things from Amazon. I think I, one of the only things I bought from Amazon for Shiva baby were the black yarmulkes. However, I think half of the shipment didn't arrive in time for the huge extra day that we had. I think we had like 30 extras. And so there wasn't enough yarmulkes for all of the um, people that needed to have them for the Shiva. And I think I, bless my UPM's heart, I had her go on an errand to a local, very, um, like, yeah, very small mom and pop shop to just buy like 40, 50 black yarmulkes and she hauled them back to set. And it was That's so nice amazing. Speaking of that, I still have a yarmulke <laughs> that is my dad's uh, that I borrowed from him to use for a play. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I've had it and I'm kind of like, now I'm at the point where I'm like, how do I give this back? Because then they're going to know I've had it for like 10 years. <laughs> so if you ever need an extra one, I have one in, I have one in my, uh, in my stash. Um, <laughs> so finally, like, okay, so now this is over. You have the premiere coming up. You said you're going to be going to that. You're going to be flying to the premiere. Yes. And less That's than exciting. 24 hours. I will be, I will be at the premiere tomorrow. So really looking forward to it. It's exciting. So <clears throat> before we move on, um, did you want to tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing uh, coming up next? Do you have something mm -hmm. lined up to come up next? So I also production design in addition to costume design. Uh, Katie and Kieran, the producers for Shiva Baby, they were also involved in another movie that I was a production designer on. And this movie is called Dating and New York. It's directed and written by Jonah Feingold and it comes out probably I want to say sometime later this year and it stars Jabuki Young White and Francesca Real. so stay tuned for that to come out um oh, you must be so excited months. that sounds awesome yeah so that'll be great but um for costume design you know the books are open so if anyone's looking for a costume designer with hot pink hair I'm here well, I think you have a very bright future. And, um, and I'm really, like I said, uh, I think this movie is going to do really well and hopefully um, put some of the very talented cast and, uh, and director on the map and yourself as well, because I really loved it. I thought it was really refreshing. Um, also, just to have like a bi character, you know, it was kind of like a just nice, nice change um, from your typical. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because I, uh, one of the things I was going to mention at first, I didn't really understand the sugar daddy thing. I was like, I'm not sure what's going on here. Is she a sex worker? Like, I don't really know. Like, so, but I like the fact that it wasn't completely explained. I like mm -hmm. that. 
that it wasn't like hit you over the head. Let's explain this completely. So just a really refreshing sort of uh, change and, but a lot of humor. So I'm going to recommend everyone try and get out and see this movie. If you can't see it, obviously in the theaters, if we're under lockdown, um, I believe that you can get it virtually. Am I correct? Yes. So starting this Friday, April 2nd, Shiva Baby will be available for video on demand. You can pre-order it and see it on Apple TV. Um, and Alta VOD is another streaming platform, I believe you can get it. Okay, so I'll put a I'll put a link in, in the description for that. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, big thumbs up for me. Thank you so much also to Stephanie for giving me the opportunity to chat with you and also to meet you. This is really, really yeah. fun. And I'm really excited to what you have in store for the future. Thank you so much for your time, Haiti. This is so, so fun. Thanks, Michelle. Well, anyways, thanks so much. So uh, my guest today was Michelle J. Lee. And she was the costume designer for uh, Shiva Baby, which is being released on April 2nd. So really excited about that. So thanks again, Michelle, for coming. And everyone have a great day. Take care. See ya.